Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to part two of Bantics or Bantam Antics. Um, this video is all about making the bush for the clutch. Now, um, this is the longest video I've done so far. It's about 40 minutes long. Um, it's nearly all on the lathe, a little bit of bench work, but uh, mostly on the lathe. Um, and I've tried to strike a balance between you know, dragging on too long and not excluding some of the detail that you might like to see. So I do hope that um, I don't drone on too much and that you enjoy the video. Um, now, a little bit of background behind the philosophy of why we're making the bush. Um, they are available, you can buy them, but um, as I think I've mentioned previously, I'm not sure if the bore in the clutch is, um, is worn, so we'll be making a, a bespoke bush to fit in there. And also, um, it's all about being able to do things and having a go. Um, we've got a lathe, so we might as well have a try and, um, and see what we can do. Um, in the future, I may work on a bike where you can't get the parts, so um, it's handy to know that you can make things like this. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy it, and um, thanks very much indeed for watching. So um, let's see how we get on. So we're over at the lathe, and um, I've got the piece of aluminium bronze chucked up in the three jaw. Um, I've faced off one end, I've put a centre in, I'm running the live centre. Um, the bar is about 25 mil too big, uh, there or thereabouts, so there's a bit to come off of it. Um, the target is the, um, the clutch bush, which is the top hat sections about 28 millimetres in diameter. So I'm going to go a little bit bigger than that, just take it down, rough it down to probably about 30, uh, and then we'll start looking at um, roughing out the actual bush itself. I'm also going to get a um, thrust washer out of this bar, which will be the same diameter as the top hat section. Uh, I've not measured that yet, but we'll just leave plenty on so that we can get that out of it and um, we'll sort of do the outside dimensions and then probably put it in a collet, part it off, put it in a collet and um, and do the uh, the bore in the middle. So um, let's take a cut off this bar and see what it cuts like. You can see I've just uh, I've done an experimental cut there just to get speeds and things. Um, it's not very round but uh, it's obviously a rough billet. It's quite strange it's got these striations where the uh, it was obviously where it was poured and um, that's how it's uh, that's how it's come out of the whatever mold it was in so um, yeah let's um, let's take a cut and see if we can get it round to start with now that's running at 315 rpm uh, I did run it fast it didn't seem to like it so um, we'll just play with it at this speed for now and see how we get on What kind of a view are you guys getting? Yeah, you can see that. I'm not entirely sure carbide is the best um, cutting medium. I think a nice sharp HSS would be better, but um, I haven't got any HSS at the moment. So we'll just... Uh, We'll live with what we've got. That'll do, I'm not gonna waste a lot of time taking it all down when we only need a bit. That's breaking the chips really nicely actually. Right, let's have a look at that portion and see, um, see what we've got.
a little bit there, a few casting marks still. Um, and we'll take one more cut and then um, we'll use that as a starting point. Yeah, I think that's quite nice. I might try slowing it down just a little bit because the um, finish is quite nice, but it's a little bit, um, there's a few striations in there. It's not perfectly smooth, but um, we'll mess around with it and see uh, see what kind of finish we can get. What I'll do is I'll rough it down to um, about 30 mil um, for the length that we need. And then um, I'll bring you back and we'll have a look at um, how we're getting on with surface finish and um, talk about making the uh, the bush right so I've turned the blank down to the um, to the required diameter for the top hat section of the bush uh, which is if we get that into shot uh, across here so I, I know I said I was going to go to 30 millimeters but then I thought about it and I thought well why am I doing that I just just go for the numbers that I'm trying to hit and I can take um, I can take balanced cuts then, which is what I did, and um, it's it's come out pretty good. The um, I think this is meant to be an inch, but obviously it's made to a tolerance, and it's actually twenty seven point one eight millimeters um, converted to metric. So this being a metric lathe, it's easier to work in metric. So I've hit twenty seven point one seven, which um, I think you know I don't think that's going to be a problem. So, obviously, the proof of the pudding is always in the eating, and um, yeah, that's absolutely spot on. So the next thing to do is decide um, what diameter we need the the actual bearing section to be, uh, and that will be determined by measuring the the inside diameter of the clutch drum. So we'll have a look at that and um, see what we come up with. Right, so we're back over at the workbench and we're having a look at the clutch drum and we're going to measure the internal bore um, so that we can work out the dimensions for the new bush. And um, a little bit of a dry subject but hopefully um, we'll get through it uh, without too many problems. Now, this clutch drum has a bit of an issue um, as far as measuring the bore is concerned and that is that there are three slots uh, machined, Ooh, you're not seeing that are you, there you go, three slots machined into the bore and why does that give us a problem? Well if we're going to measure this bore we want to go diametrically opposite uh, on the bearing surfaces with some sort of an instrument to take our reading but the problem that we have is that these slots are machined directly opposite each sort of portion of the bearing surface so it leaves us with a very small um, target area to get anything in there. And so something like a snap gauge, which needs quite a bit of surface area to take a reading, um, wouldn't really work because you're sort of half into that slot and half out of it, and you end up with a false reading. So that's why I've decided to use spring bow calipers. Let me get them in focus for you. Internal spring bow calipers. And I've had these for about probably... 34, getting on for 35 years. Um, I got them just before I started my apprenticeship when I was building up a toolkit. And I haven't used them very often, but um, 
you know, when you need them, they're very handy things. Um, and there's, um, there's a bit of a technique to using them that I found, and this is how I do it anyway, and that is that, as you can see, I'm messing around with them before I put the camera on. When you put the uh, when you put the calipers into the ball, the amount of resistance um, that you want to feel is um, the best way I can describe it. It's probably just a little bit less than you would get with a feeler gauge. Um, you know that sort of dragging feeling that you get with a feeler gauge when you know it's just right. You want just a little bit less than that, and the reason for that is the um, they don't take much to deflect the spring. And if you had any sort of drag, it might just be enough to give you a false reading. So they want to just go in. You're really using them like a um, like a plug gauge. Get them set up, tweak them a little bit, and then just just feel for slightly less drag than you would get with a feeler gauge, and make sure that they're nice and straight, perpendicular to the ball, and. Um, that's about right. And I'm going to go in two directions so that we eliminate any ovality that we might have. I'm just dropping off into the slot there, which is no good. I'm just sort of just trying to keep it nice and straight. When you remove the caliper from the ball, you just feel to make sure that you don't get any any spring, because if the calipers are kicking open. On the spring, as you remove it from the ball, you're going to get an overread, and um, obviously, it won't be accurate. So I think I'm, I think I'm there with that. Um, so I'm just going to measure across the points now with the uh, digital caliper, and then after that, I'm going to use the micrometer as a comparator, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So set to millimeters because we're working in millimetres on the lathe. I'm going 20.82 20.82 millimetres. So I'll just switch that off. And what I'm going to do is set the micrometer 0 to 25 millimeter micrometer. I'm going to set that to 20.82 and then just compare the feel that I get on the um, springboard calipers with the feel that I got in the bore. Because if I if I wind the micrometer in, I'm just getting in focus, if I wind it in onto the springboard calipers, there's always the possibility that I'll squeeze them together and get an under reading. Um, even the uh, the ratchet mechanism on the micrometer is enough sometimes to squeeze the calipers together. So we don't want to do that. So I'll set the uh, set this up to twenty point eight two, and we'll see where we are. So there's twenty. Twenty point five. Five and three is eight, and then another two. Just there. Uh, closer look. Right. So we're set to get that in focus. Twenty point eight two. So Let's see what it feels like. That feels all right to me. So, I'll make a note of that, 20.82 millimetres, 
and that should be our target when we're turning our bearing surface on our new bush. Um, I'm just going to take a measurement of that, that length there because I haven't done that yet. And I'll just use the um, I'll just use the digital caliper for that. And it's difficult to do on camera. I'm going to do it off camera and then I'll show you the reading. Twenty-three seventy-two. I think twenty-three point seven will probably be probably be enough, I would think. So there we go. Um, we've got our dimensions now to uh, continue making the bush, and um, we'll go back over to the lathe and uh, have a go. Well, we're back over at the lathe, ready to do some more turning. Um, I just mic'd up the old bush as a matter of interest, really, just to see um, how much wear had taken place. And the reading I got, I'm just going to get the technical notebook in there. Highly technical. 20.67 was the reading that I took, so just over a tenth um, of a millimetre, which is probably quite a lot, actually really in a, in a little bush like that so um, yeah 20.82 was the reading and I think if we hit 20.8 we'll be doing all right um, that'll give us that two micron fit which I think will be perfect so that's going to be the target figure now earlier on I said about finishing this thing off in a collet and I don't know why I said that because I haven't got a one inch collet so um, can't do that so we're kind of limited on our options really but it's quite rigid in this three jaw chuck it's not as though it's a flimsy um, flimsy diameter so I think we'll be alright just to um, turn the um, turn the bearing surface down up to the top hat section and then we'll drill and ream generously so that we go past the section that's going to be the bush past the section that's going to be the thrust washer and then we can part off the bush and the thrust washer and, um, and have our finished articles so that's the plan um, let's have a go at it see what happens well uh, I'm an idiot uh, because I've been turning this material down for the last 40 minutes and speaking to um, a camera which had switched itself off and I didn't notice so uh, unfortunately I don't have that footage but um, I'll explain to you what I've done and um, hopefully you'll take my word for it. So I experimented a little bit with speeds and feeds and we ended up at 630 RPM which is this lever position here and a second speed on the motor and we dialed the feed down um, which started to produce some sort of reasonable chips that were getting a bit stringy um, so increase the depth of cut a little bit uh, on the carbide cutter and we started to get much more acceptable chips and the surface finish was good very good in fact so I worked out the balance cuts to get us down to um, 20.8 millimeters that was 1.2 millimeter depth of cut which it really liked we were getting great um, great surface finish and um, we hit 20.83 in the end um, which wasn't a million miles away from where we were aiming but unfortunately the um, the drum wouldn't go on it was nowhere near going on um, now Obviously, I was a little bit over at 20.83, and um, I think that my measurements with the spring bow caliper were also a little bit out, um, which it was hampered by the fact that the machines were grooved in the... Uh, the grooves were machined in the bore. The, the machines were grooved? Anyway, um, the grooves were machined in the bore, and that was giving us you know, a little bit of difficulty. I'm not going to make excuses. Um, 
I, I was over reading with my measurement. So unfortunately, that meant that I had to take a sort of a fairly um, small cut with the carbide, uh, which it did, uh, but it cost us a little bit on our surface finish. Um, I mean, it's acceptable, but it's not as good as it was with the um, with the deeper cuts. But I'm happy with it. Um, we've hit where we need to be, which is 20.79 as it turned out, and we've got um, we've got a clutch drum that runs on our bearing very very nicely without any without any headache. So so that was successful, although we didn't quite arrive at. The place we're at, um, as intended, as I say, I, I did have to take that that small cut, which cost us a little bit in um, in surface finish. But all's well that ends well. Um, we've got the right the right length, maybe just a tiny bit over, which is fine because we can face the end off anyway. To um, well, I'll we'll have to take that. I'll we'll have to break that edge anyway, but. Um, yeah, looking good so far. So the next operation is to drill it and ream it. Um, and you'll recall that we're going to go much further or, or quite a bit further so that we can get a thrust washer out of that larger diameter as well. Um, and I promise you that I will definitely film that next bit. So um, I'll set the, uh, set the machine up for, um, for boring out the hole and we'll go from there.